Hi, my name is JW, and this is the second day of my, or the second entry in my path to OSCP. And uh, for the past few weeks, ever since I signed up for OSCP, I've been trying to figure out how to prepare myself mentally and also skill wise uh, to the ordeal that is uh, ahead of me. Uh, because I've heard a lot about the OSCP labs, that there's so many different uh, types of machines, type of uh, vulnerabilities, that you really need to get into the proper mindset of breaking into things, uh, of course, legally. And I've previously done this with uh, capture the flag type of uh, contests or puzzles. And those are usually one-off things. There is not a series of events. There is usually not a full network uh, that you're supposed to be penetrating and um, so in that way the OSCP labs are going to be definitely the biggest thing I'm going to try and uh, break myself into uh, but how would I then start this process how would I start the preparations what sort of skills do I need and I figured that I could try and I was also recommended this uh, by a few people on uh, on chats and uh, that was basically downloading these vulnerable virtual machine images for example from uh, bullenhub.com and a few of them were recommended to me but the problem is that I'm lacking in that sort of um, structure in the routine of breaking into things enumerating the, th the certain things always in the same order and that way finding out what is different in this machine. I lack that sort of rigor. I just do an end map and then I'm like, well, I guess I'll try this. But uh, there are so many different nuances to these vulnerable VMs uh, that I get stuck. Either I am thinking too, n a too narrow mindedly. Uh, like this is exactly how it's supposed to go or I'm thinking too, too deeply like for example uh, in one of these VMs basically you you end up getting a big 90 something thousand word dictionary file basically uh, with uh, Unicode characters and so forth and I noticed that some of those words were repeating or most of those words were repeating at least twice and what I was thinking was that, okay, maybe there's some sort of binary, binary encoding in the number of repeats uh, in conception. And uh, in, in, in consequence, I ended up spending too much time doing this binary analysis of this pattern of words, where in reality, what I should have done is use that as a dictionary and just brute force. I personally, I dislike brute forcing. It lacks all manner of skill and finesse and whatever. I guess this is a romantic uh, thought on what penetration testing is, but I don't know. Uh, yesterday I was trying to get through this uh, one VM and uh, basically the first uh, level was getting was guessing that one username and password or one user accounts password was the same as the user account uh, after I got through that I then should have tried a dictionary attack a dictionary brute force attack on another account and that just doesn't seem in any way clear and sensical to me it means I, I feel like I should be getting clues on the way but of course that's not how real world works I, either uh, so I decided to do a little bit of a change of pace and I decided I'm just going to go and read through uh, a bunch of uh, walkthroughs for these VMs and just to get into the mindset uh, of those authors as they're cracking those boxes and hopefully learn new tips and tricks, learn new uh, tools that I didn't know that were out there, hopefully learning ways that can 
make my attack of these VMs more constructed and uh, easily repeatable across um, dozens of machines. Uh, and just today alone I learned things like how to spawn a TTY connection uh, or spawn a TTY uh, shell on a Linux with Python uh, because if you have a reverse shell to your machine uh, you can, for example, change passwords or change users and so forth. You need a TTY. Uh, then I also learned that you can easily pipe, uh, bash, and direct the output uh, to be a net socket. Basically, if you redirect output to deb slash tcp slash the IP address slash the port number, and it will take an outbound TCP connection to that port uh, and then output all of your bash commands, output and input, to, to, to that pipe. And that's, that's brilliant. Uh, I also learned, this was quite new to me, that you could actually override binary paths on Linux with a function of the same name. So let's say that you have uh, user bin foobar command and you don't want to execute that user bin foolbar and you don't have permission to actually override it. But if you want to run your own command in your current shell, you can just have a function whose name is slash user slash bin slash foolbar. And you could, of course, in that function, you can do whatever bash wants. And that blew my mind that that's possible. And all of these sort of small tips and tricks how, which switches to use with Nmap, uh, how to use Hydra for brute forcing, how to use DearB for brute forcing, HTTP uh, websites and so forth. I'm learning so much, so I feel that this is, this is how I should have started two weeks ago, is basically running through dozens and dozens of walkthroughs just to get acquainted with these tools. Of course, that's basically, I guess, what um, OSCP uh, training material will be like but I have very limited time I have only the 30 days for the labs everyone's been looking at me like I'm crazy trying trying to do this in 30 days instead of the 60 that they recommend but unfortunately because I wanted it already to start at the start of February but I'm they were overbooked so I couldn't start until the end of February and I'm going to go on vacation mid-April so I have all of March basically to go get through this class and then one weekend or maybe two weekends in between where I can take this exam uh, before I'm flying out uh, so interesting times but uh, I'll keep you updated